The National Chairman Caretaker Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee of the ruling All Progressives Congress APC, Governor May Malai Buni, has cancelled the party's National Executive Committee meeting slated for Thursday. Buni was on Wednesday given the go-ahead by President Muhammad Buhari to continue to manage the affairs of the party and to ensure the conduct of its March 26 National Convention. Now, acting National Chairman of the CECPC, Governor Abubakar Sani Bello, had last week fixed a, a neck meeting for Thursday. Well, joining us to discuss this is Biodo Shombi, a political analyst, and Ifedayo Iyaniwura. He is the Ekiti State IPAC Chairman. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. It's nice to be with you. Good evening. It's my pleasure. Great. Um, I'll start with you, Mr. Yanwura. We, we have spoken about um, a lot of issues uh, as to um, po political parties, but let's talk about the APC and all of the infighting that we've seen. First, um, there seemed to have been a coup against um, um, the Buni led C uh, CPC. Uh, and, and the last time you and I spoke, you had said something about um, this. But now, Buni seems to be back in the picture and he seems to be turning things around. Do you think that this cancellation has anything to do with the convention date? Is that date sacrosanct, even though Mr. President has said there will not be any going back on that convention date? Uh, well, uh, thank you very much for having me again. Uh, what I feel is that um, normalcy is what we see taking place back in the party. If you recall our, our last discussion, I was so emphasized on the basis of the political party leadership managing Buni instead of rocking the boat. Because the position of INEC is so clear, particularly the HANED guidelines and regulation, Article 8, 2018. Where well stated that for any communication to come between political party and high neck, it has to be through a known chairman and secretary of the party. So, if APC must conduct their convention at all costs by March, automatically it can only be by Buni. And and every every step taken by Belo remains null and void. Because there is no document Belo can sign that will be accepted by Hynek. And it is very impossible for Buni to write a letter of notification of convention and now have Belo to preside over South Convention. Because there are some documents that must be signed Immediately after that convention, uh, what the delegate list, agenda for the convention, and this same list of committee members, and alongside the list of the, uh, 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 the winners of the outcome of the convention, all this must be signed by a chairman known to INEC, which of course will now be and not going chairman. He's the one that will deliver the convention. So whatever Pelo must have done is soon avoid. And for Mr. President to abuse his discretion, saying that the, the party should go back to the status quo, that Buni must go back to his position, and also warn the governors, maybe the ones that seem to be benighted, to cease fire. I think someone will have advised Mr. President brilliantly on that. Mm. Because what we're expecting is Mr. Buni must thoroughly be managed if the party will go ahead with the party's convention. All right. Let me, I'll come back to you on that. Uh, let me come to you, um, Mr. Shomi. It, 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 it makes me wonder why the president even went with the idea from the governor of Kaduna State, El Rufai, in the first place to stage a, a takeover uh, by Belo if this was going to be the 
you know, the resultant effect? Why wasn't it even thought through? I know people always give that excuse that the president is trying to stay aloof, you know, um, and not get involved within, you know, the party. But now that the president has gotten himself involved, even though uh, El Rufai verbally said that they had spoken to Mr. President, but now the president is back in the you know, picture saying, well, let's go back to status quo. But the question is, why was this even allowed to happen in the first instance? And, and how does this even make the party look to those who are in opposition to them? Oh, yeah, you see, when the major premise is faulty or minor premise is faulty, the conclusion will always be faulty. We need to start and go backwards. When Oshiomole was removed, the idea of a caretaker committee came into place. And then they now had a caretaker committee that was challenged in the courts. The validity and the legality was challenged in the courts. And APC continued to troll along like that until when another coup came, um, the, the desire to change the leadership by some people who claimed to have the backing of the president. And they succeeded in doing that up to the point at which INEC made a pronouncement. It was the pronouncement of INEC that caused a revisit of the issue. And what led, what, what was the e point being made by INEC was hinging on a point that he needed to give 21 days notice before they can change leadership. That itself is broken. That should never, never, you know, be part of the rules or procedures in the first instance. A political party is an association, voluntary association of people. Whenever they choose to change their leadership, they must be able to do it um, within the ambits of their own rules, the rules of association. It shouldn't be within the ambits of the electoral rules, you know, dictated by the umpire or imposed by the national assembly. So that is the first um, observation which I um, need to make on that. The second issue, you know, is um, the idea of having a caretaker committee. Does it mean that whenever uh, Mr. President, uh, not particularly Babuari, but it could be anybody in future. If you are not happy with the party chairman, all you need to do is engineer his removal and then have a caretaker committee. You know, that does not engender, you know, good in, uh, internal party democracy. There is, should be no reason why anybody or group of people, no matter how powerful they are, should be able to remove a democratically elected chairman of any association. Mm. Um, the rule should be that they should wait to the convention, then present another candidate. And if you like or you don't like the person, you can then do whatever you like. At that. So the error starts from day one. The moment we had to start removing chairmen, elected chairmen, and replace them with unelected you know, officers, that is where the problem is. And that is what I make, in my view, should be addressing. It's not about whether they should give 18 days notice, 21 days notice before they can change leadership. No, the principle, the basic democratic principle that once you are elected, you cannot be removed except through the ballot. You know, that actually means sacrosanct, and it should be central to our internal political organization. So within that context, one is bound to look at the role of Mr. President in all this. Mr. President was quoted to have, according to El Malam El Rupai, to have endorsed, you know, their move mm. against uh, the Buni-led administration. While also we have Buni now coming in to say, well, he has the endorsement of Mr. President to remain in office. The interesting part of it for me is that you can see the role of the law enforcement agencies who are busy reading what they perceive to be Mr. President's body language. When they thought Mr. Bo uh, President's body language was in favor of bill law, you saw the security operatives move into action to ensure that Buni was not allowed, uh, Buni and Apan Gwede, you know, the secretary, uh, were not in control of the secretary. And the moment they read a second language that Mr. President now favors Buni, again, they have to move in and then ensure Buni remains. So we can't have a law enforcement system, you know, uh, being run in that way. Uh, we should be building institution, not you know, an institution that depends on the body language of Mr. President or any other individual. You know, these are 
issues which are central, you know, to good governance and democracy in Nigeria. If we don't start addressing it, we are the Nigerian police force, look at the law, look at the rules of association within the APC, look at the electoral rules, rather than looking out for the body language of Mr. President, we will continue to move from one crisis to the other. And in my view, we should begin to look at the idea that it should be an anathema for anyone or group of people to remove any chairman except to a uh, national convention. So in my view, uh, Buni came in through a coup. So they were trying to ask him through another coup. So it is this system that needs to be challenged. Huh, interesting. So garbage in, garbage out. But let's go to um, back to you, Mr. Yanuura. Um, Mr. Shomi makes an interesting point here. And I did ask a question. How does this well, make, I, make... Would you like to respond to him? But quickly, I just want to add, how does this make the APC look, especially as it's inching close to a national convention? Uh, well, let me state this clearly, because of 10 factor. You see, there is no political party in Nigeria that has a zone isolated rules that has surpassed the position of electoral heights. Mm -hmm. So, you see, the issue of Oshio Mole and the situation that brought in Boni as the caretaker chairman of APC, if we can recollect, we will realize that it was the secretary of Oshio Mole that the leadership of the party managed to call for national and, and to call for next meeting, an avenue where Oshomole was removed. He don't forget it was the secretary that called for that next meeting. And don't forget the position of INEC in, res in respect of the commission's guidelines and regulations concerning the political party suppression in Nigeria. That when there's going to, when, whenever there is going to be a communication between political parties and the commission, it can only come through the chairman and secretary. So if where there is no chairman, then secretary can take charge. So that is the opportunity that the APC utilized in the case of Oshio Mole, in the case that brought Iboni as caretaker chairman. But the question we need to even ask ourselves is this. The issue of caretaker in APC doesn't even know to electoral heart, doesn't even know to the party constitution, you see, the party is only enjoying a certain opportunity. The case is strictly an intra-party matter. So nobody can fight it from her side. Mm. You can only fight within. At the moment there is somebody within the party that wanted to go to court to challenge whatever he perceived to be an abnormality before a competent court for adjudication, leadership will easily express such individual. At the moment you are expert, you allow the statutory right to drive the party to court. And that will be the strength of the political party, call it APC. And this is why it's as if what they are practicing stand. We cannot blame my name for receiving the position of APC and talking about the situation that brought him beneath because it was a recognized known secretary of the party mm. that called for net meeting. So in this case, of Buni Bello. Bello lacks all statutory rights to call for next meeting because it's never a renowned chairman of the party nor secretary of the party. So if the leadership of the party has wanted to play the game perfectly this time around again, even if they know that it's Buni that is their problem, they ought to have managed the secretary very well. Mm. So that when they manipulate the secretary, then the secretary can do their bit. But in a situation where like they fight both the Buni and the secretary, of course, no one left a game that can play the game for their for their own advantage. Okay. And that is why they find themselves at, at the corner now. Okay. Interesting. Which, in, which, in which they left with no chance to bring Buni back. So the least have to just stop grandstanding. Because the true Democrats in Nigeria will now open their eyes on ground and see our personal democracy, electoral process being bastardized. Okay. All right. Finally, Mr. Shomi, before we wrap things up, um, there are those who say that it's the big wigs within the party that are causing all of this trouble, and and most of the trouble that is you know ongoing in the party is um, may, maybe because of one person. Um, 
But where do you stand on that quickly as we wrap up? Because, again, I asked at the beginning, are we certain that this convention date will not shift with all of the things that we're seeing happen every day? Okay, if you'll allow me, um, I will come to your question, but I need to quickly correct the impression created by Mr. Yadigura. Um, Oshomala's case is a case of not being, he was suspended, you know, um, um, by his own word. And that was what led to the court case, you know, asserting the fact that he could not sit on nothing. Um, once you've lost your membership at the world level, you cannot continue to hold office. So the idea that, that the secretary convened a meeting was because of the crisis created, you know, by the court case. So uh, Mr. Nibura needs to understand what led to that. Uh, there was no other option. The point I am making is that we need to ensure that when people are elected, they are also removed through, you know, a democratic process rather than um, some people coming together to remove them. This is exactly what happened to Buni, and Buni is back in office. In relation to your question, whether uh, the convention will, Mr. President has actually, um, from all the accounts available, officially and unofficially, Mr. President has made it clear that the convention should go ahead on March 26. Mm -hmm. Now, there is another problem. Legal cases. We learned that somebody had obtained a judgment. One well, Mr. Amuru is um, uh, last year, you know, stopping the convention from going ahead. And APC is trying frantically to discharge it. Except they discharge the court order, they cannot hold the convention on March 26. Mm -hmm. But from what I gathered, lawyers seems to be confident that um, that will be overturned. If that is overturned, then the convention will go on on March 26, uh, provided there's no other new box uh, uh, injunction against it. Well, I guess that the uh, we'll all have to wait and see. Unfortunately, time is not on our side. I want to say thank you to uh, Biodo Shomu, who is a political analyst. Ifedayo Yanwura is uh, the Ekiti State IPAC chairman. Thank you so much, gentlemen, uh, for being part of the conversation. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us uh, as we round off the show tonight. Uh, we'll leave you with street views. Yes, because Nigerians are speaking about their love-hate relationship with pedestrian bridges. I am Mary Anacorn. I'll be back tomorrow with Plus Politics as we talk for development. Have a good evening. You have to be safe. And as an elderly person, I climb it to even show example to people that this is the way to go. Most time we are always in an hurry and um, you know there is traffic everywhere and all that. So people want to just take an alternative route to get to where they are going to. It's not right, but we, we do it sometimes. But for those who have a challenge, maybe there should be an alternate thing the, the government would provide for them to to cross but if you don't have a issue you just have to do the right thing i prefer crossing than using the pedestrian there are some people who are phobia for heights and most of us the reason why we do use uh, normal this thing eh, instead of pedestrian is because we felt stressful before you climb this thing you are already tired then some people are carrying load so carrying load with this thing moving up is another problem many people want shortcuts so they prepare crossing here than using the Penestra Bridge, but it's not right. It's good to do what is right. The Penestra Bridge is being guided, so there is no need for scaring that you will, or fall down or nothing else. So it's being guided by iron, so it's very safe. There's no problem about that. You can use the Penestra Bridge. That's it. I don't think there's any excuse saying it's because of health. I don't think there's any excuse. It's dangerous crossing the express. It's an express, it's not even an ordinary street. And it reduces traffic uh, jam on the road if you use the pedestrian bridge. If you look at the bridge, for instance, it's quite long. It's quite a distance. So people feel, let me just go across in five seconds, I'm at the other side. But I think it's safer to use the bridge. And, you know, a driver might be coming, field break, eats you, and that's the end of the road.